हेलो एवरीवन, आई एम सी विभूति नारंग वेलकम टू आवर चैनल वॉक्स कॉव अकेडमी कंटिन्यूइंग आर इनकम टैक्स सीरीज विच इज इनकम अंडर द हेड सैलरी विद पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द वीडियो द फर्स्ट टू पार्ट्स आर ऑलरेडी कवर्ड एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर कवरिंग द रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट प्रॉफिट इन ड्यू ऑफ सैलरी डिडक्शन एंड रिलीफ अंडर सेक्शन एटी So just brief about what we have done and what is left. So the first two topics, how to calculate and announces, are covered under part one. Perquisites is covered under part two, and deductions and retirement benefits we are covering in today's video. And if in case you haven't watched those two videos, I'll put the videos in the description. The link will be in the description. If you want to watch, you can watch those videos. Starting with the first topic, which is retirement benefits. So first of all. what is retirement benefit retirement is you are withdrawing from a position in which you were already working from a past good number of years for example you are into an occupation or you are sitting on a position from past 20 years 12 years or 20 years whatever the case is and now you are just taking a break from that active working life that is retirement and benefit is that you have to earn the livelihood for the remaining life till the time you are alive so you want some advantage some profit to be earned from the past services you have rendered with the employer that is the benefit you are getting at the time of retirement so whenever you are retiring you are getting some benefit and that is known as retirement benefits under the income tax act first of all we need to understand what are the types of retirement benefits which are covered under the act or which are given to the employee the first is gratuity which is covered by payment of gratuity act the second is pension which is covered by the pf act third is leave and cashment there is no act governing it and the last is provident fund now talking about the first retirement benefit for every retirement benefit just keep in mind one thing that it is an appreciation it is a a uh, benefit given to the employee because of the past services rendered this particularly is covered by the prevent of gratuity act and in this case a minimum of 5 years of service rendering with the employer is compulsory so if you are having a service of 5 years then only the taxability issues for gratuity will arise if you are going or leaving or terminating your service before 5 years with the existing employer gratuity is not available now if the gratuity is received by the employee himself at the time of his retirement then it is taxable under the head salary but if he is not on the job due to a premature death or any reason and the uh, employee is not there as uh, existing in the world only then in that case at the time of his death whatever the legal heirs are receiving will not be taxable under the head salaries it is taxable in their heads under the income of uh, in under the income head other sources now we need to understand what are the gratuity exemption limit there are three types of categories in which the employees are being bifurcated first are those employees which are covered under the payment of gratuity act second are those employees which are covered not covered under the payment of gratuity act and third are those employees which are government employees government employees case is very easy to understand whatever they receive is exempt in nature but what is important to understand for those employees which are covered under the act and for those employees which are not covered under the act the first is the case in which the employees are covered under this act what happens is in case of allowances we studied that minimum of some things minimum of some limits it is said to be exempt in case of perquisites we understood that minimum of something or higher of something minimum of something was taxable now in case of retirement benefits it will be always the least or the minimum will be exempt in nature right so whatever your amount you are receiving which is minimum of the limit set by the government that will become exempt now in case of employees which are covered under the payment of gratuity act the lower of the falling is exempt in whole video whenever we'll do any lower of the falling concept two limits are quite fixed first is what you have actually received from that retirement benefit or any other benefit second is a fixed amount set by the act now in this case the first is gratuity actually received and the second is 20 lakh 
few budgets earlier it was 10 lakh from past few years now it has been increased to 20 lakhs third criteria to check the exemption limit is number of years of employment you have worked in the company and you have to make it half a month Generally, it has to be 15 by 30, but few employees or you can say wagers went to the court for the same and they said that we work 26 days in a month, four days are Sunday. And so whenever you are having a lower denominator, your numerator increases and the value also increases. So for act purposes, the court decision is taken into account and it is 15 by 26. You have to multiply it by the last salary which will include basic plus DA. But for those employees which are not covered under the payment of gratuity act, two limits again are set. One is the gratuity actually received and the second is 20 lakh. The third is half the month. Now they are not under the act so you can take it half the month. It is half only into number of years of employment into last 10 months average salary and what you have to do is basic plus DA even fixed commission is also taken in this case so that is to be taken into account third case I have very well informed and it is said that the gratuity paid by the government to employees is fully accept right now the second type of retirement benefit is pension again it is received at the time of retirement that five years of service criteria is not there so again it is a reward for the past services which the employee has rendered in case of pension what are the types and its treatment is important see whenever you are retiring at a particular age earlier or uh, the retirement age was 65 as of now it is 58 or 60 somewhere it's 58 sometimes it's 60 in some companies life expectancy uh, has decreased and when you have a lower life expectancy you want to retire earlier so that you're able to enjoy your balanced life now what at the time of retirement you want is you should get a lump sum amount and you should also get some amount on a periodical basis for example, an employee is receiving 6 lakh as pension. Now out of the 6 lakh, he wants that 50% should be lump sum. That is at the time of retirement, he is getting some amount in hand. He gets 3 lakh rupees total. And the balance 3 lakh, he is getting suppose 5,000 per month till the time he is um, alive. Now the amount which is received in lump sum is known as computed pension and the amount which is received on a periodical basis is known as uncomputed pension uncomputed pension or you can say the periodical pension is taxable definitely you have to pay tax on the same but if it is commuted and you're receiving a lump sum amount in hand if it is received by the government employee again it is fully exempt but if it is not received by the government employee there are two things First, the employee can be covered under the Payment of Gratuity Act and in that case, already you are getting exemption under gratuity, so your exemption over here is lowered. Now, what the exemption is, it is one third of the commuted amount. So, our commuted amount is 3 lakh. So, one third means 1 lakh rupees, so 2 lakh becomes taxable. But if the employee is not covered under the Gratuity Act, then he is not receiving any gratuity, then 50% is exempt. Means if 3 lakh is the total amount, 1 lakh 50 will become exempt and 1 lakh 50 will become taxable. So this was about pension. The next we have leave engagement. So uh, this is not covered in any kind of act actually, but references to different acts are taken just to get the basic idea about the leaves to be taken account. Three types of leaves are there. One is sick leave, the second is a earned leave and the last is casual leave. Sick leave and casual leaves our journey sick leave is for many medical illness then uh, casual leaves is generally you have any kind of emergency or you want so many family issue you want some leaves last is on leave which is earned on the basis of years or days of services you are entering the company so for the earned leaves or sick leave it is said that if they get accumulated you are paid you can in cash those leaves in cash those leaves means you can get the cash or you can get the salary benefit out of that so there can be two way out you can take it on a monthly basis uh, on the periodical yearly basis also or after a period of time in employment itself during employment 
but if you are accumulating for the time of retirement and you want to take it a lump sum amount at the time of retirement it becomes a retirement benefit so as for the terms of employment generally an employee is granted certain period of leaves on yearly basis such leaves may be casual medical or privileged so medical is sick leave privileged is earned leave generally an employee can accumulate his medical and privileged leaves and can avail such leaves in subsequent years as per his necessity what is the treatment of leave and cashment there are three bifurcations the first is if you are encashing those leaves during the service it becomes fully taxable if it is encashed after the death of the employee it is fully exempt in the hands of legal heirs but if you are taking it on retirement or at the time of leaving your job then government employee again it is fully exempt if it is a non government employee then exemption is again we have four limits now two limits are fixed one is the amount you have actually received and the fixed amount by the department or the act is 3 lakh rupees the third is 10 months average salary and the fourth it is said the cash equivalent of unavailed leave calculated on the basis of maximum of 30 days leave for every year of actual service rendered now let's suppose the employee rendered 10 years of service and he kept on accumulating 40 year 40 leaves per year 400 leaves become pending and he can in cash those leaves government says that in income tax act you can take maximum in cash 30 leaves per year only so beyond that becomes taxable so for 10 years of service 300 leaves will become in cashable right the next benefit which is quite very interesting and you must have very well heard about provident fund so it is a scheme where you are investing your money and you are getting benefit out of that investment so this is just to motivate to invest your fund on a very early age of life itself sometime the employee may not feel good because a good amount is deducted because tds is not that that higher end but pf is a good amount which is being deducted but this is not a deduction it is a type of an investment which you receive over a period of time what are the types of provident fund there are basically four types the first is a recognized provident fund the second is an unrecognized provident fund third is a statutory provident fund and fourth is a public provident fund public provident fund it's quite common you can you can uh, invest in that ppf the second is uh, the statutory provident fund which uh, is the pf act or the epfo website which is being recognized by a statute of government and uh, that is statutory provident fund the problem or the understanding is on recognized on unrecognized let's suppose there is a company having a good number of employees of more than 100 employees and they want to have their own private provident fund they don't want to invest in statutory provident fund so in that case what happens is the company employer goes to the commissioner of income tax known as cit to recognize the provident fund scheme which is being launched by that employer so if the cit seal and stamp sign it it means he approves that scheme then it is a recognized provident fund but if it's a private fund and it is not been recognized by the cit then it becomes an unrecognized provident fund who are the person who can deposit amount in provident fund as we all know that salary is based on a relationship of employer and employee right so there is an employer and there is an employee employer also contribute in pf employee also contribute in pf and whatever contributions are done by both of them over a period of time interest is also earned on both the contributions right although provident fund is being learned as a retirement benefit but there are some taxability issues which need to be understood at the time of services being rendered so what is the treatment we do for the provident fund if it is a statutory provident fund right and employee contribution is there then it is deductible under atc if you don't understand atc it is a chapter 6a deduction given from gross total income to every individual i will have a dedicated video on deductions on every section under at if it is a employer contribution it is exempt if it is interest either of employer or employee it is exempt if i talk about recognized provident fund in that case employee contribution is deductible under section 80c employer contribution 
is exempt but up to 12% of salary and salary is basic plus DM and commission and interest is exempt down to 9.5% per annum. Now unrecognized provident fund is not deductible under ATC so you don't get any deduction for the same but employer contribution and interest is exempt but as this is unrecognized so benefits are not much there we'll learn in retirement case public provident fund so only the employees contributing so it is deductible under ATC employer contribution is not applicable and interest is exempt at the time of retirement what happens is if you are receiving from a statutory provident fund the amount on termination is exempt but there is a condition up to which it is exempt in case of recognized provident fund again it is exempt in case of unrecognized provident fund employer and interest were exempt during the time of employment so at the time of retirement it becomes taxable under the head salary because there is no benefit attached to this unrecognized provident fund the employee contribution was not deductible earlier under ATC so here it becomes taxable and interest on employee contribution is taxable under the head other sources right for these two exemptions there is a saying that minimum five years of service as said in gratuity is compulsory then only it becomes exempt but if you are receiving this accumulator accumulation at the time of retirement before five years of service then this amount is received due to ill health the employee was not well or he was there was any disablement he was not able to work on the seat for the job or his position there's a death of the employee premature death then any other reason which is not in his control then only it becomes exempt otherwise if you are withdrawing before five years without any reason it becomes fully taxable and his contribution is taxable under the head salary his interest on his contribution is taxable under the head other sources next topic is profit in lieu of salary so till now three broad topics we have uh, learned one is allowance second is perquisite and third is retirement benefits right but still if you are receiving something there are four topics in it which if received by the employee it is not a retirement benefit it is due to his employment and it is not taxed under any other area and it is related to employment then it is a profit in lieu of salary so it is payment which are received by the employee in lieu or in addition of salary or wages so beyond this if it is a salary or wage it's a part of employment but it's not a retirement benefit the first thing which comes under this is nominal compensation or compensation on account of modification in terms and conditions for example an employee is working and during the course of his employment there are certain changes in the terms and conditions and he says that due to this modification i am not feeling comfortable or i am feeling any loss in my profile so they compensate and they give a good amount at that time and that becomes profit in lieu of salary the second is any employee receiving payment under keeman insurance policy what is keeman insurance policy will have a very detailed discussion when we will be teach, uh, talking about PGBP that is income under the profit and gains from business profession I will discuss that topic in detail as of now you can understand that this amount when received uh, by an employee it is profit in lieu of salary the third component covered over here is any amount due or received before joining or after cessation of employment before you are joining or after you are leaving from the employment it is also known as non-compete fees again it is more concerned with PGBP only but for a brief introduction I will say for example there is a practicing chartered accountant he is already earning 10 lakh per annum and now any company or any CA firm or any big industrial company wants to hire his services they don't want that he should practice along with the employment so what they will say to the employee or that practicing CA that you leave this uh, practice and join in our company. What the CA will say, I'm already earning a handsome amount. Why should I join you? So they say to compensate this loss before joining the employment, we pay you 15 lakh rupees and then you will not practice anymore. And you will be on a package of 12 lakh per annum with us also. So that is amount which is received before joining. After cessation, there are people who retire but their urge to work do not die 
fine. So they have someone have instinct, no? They cannot sit. They cannot be idle because they know if they are idle, they will fall ill, or they are not comfortable. So what they think? We are leaving the job. We'll start our own business now. Now what happens is from the company which you are retiring, if you start that same business, saying that you are an ex-employee of that company, many of the clients or many of the customers will shift to that person who has just retired from the company. So there is a problem or there is a competition effect with the company and the company says that you should not do this business for the coming five years and we pay you a lump sum amount of let's suppose 30 lakh rupees and this is known as non-compete fee. So you are not competing anymore with the existing person. When you have any payment due or to be received by any assessee from the employer on or from a provident or any other fund. So if you are any, receiving any amount from any fund, it will exclude employee's own contribution and interest on his contribution. Next we have, uh, this is not a retirement benefit or a profit in lieu of salary. There are two important topics which is one is retrenchment compensation immediately after this and the second is voluntary retirement scheme. What happens is, this is a very good time to uh, make you learn this concept. As of now, uh, COVID-19 pandemic is going on and there are financial crunch everywhere. Right? There is an economic slowdown and there is a financial crunch due to which the companies are not able to keep that much number of employees as they were keeping earlier. Now they have two options. For example, a company is there and they want to retrench their employees. They want that employees should not be there. For example, they have 500 employees and they want only 400 employees. Now they say is they can directly, the senior management or the top level management can directly take out, pick up those 100 employees which they don't want in the company. That is known as retrenchment. And when you are retrenching such employees, you have to pay them the compensation loss. But the second option is when they are retiring, they when they are uh, they are wanting that they these employees should not be there. Hundred employees they don't want in their company. They offer to all the five hundred employees that if you want to voluntarily retire from the services, then before the retirement date, if you are retiring, then in that case we'll pay you voluntary retirement and we'll give you a good amount for that VRS. So VRS, also known as voluntary retirement scheme, is a scheme in which offered to voluntarily retire from services before the retirement date. What is exempt in this case is the following least amount will be exempt. The first is the amount actually received. The other is 5 lakh. So earlier gratuity amount was 20 lakh fixed amount. The even cash bill fixed was 3 lakh rupees and in VRS fixed amount is 5 lakh. Third is three months salary for every completed year of service. So three months salary, if, if the employee has worked for 10 years in that company, so 30 months salary. Then fourth is salary at the time of retirement. So at the time of retirement into the number of months which are left for the service. Now we have, uh, okay, salary in this case becomes basic plus DA plus commission. So all these three will be added. Now we have is retrenchment compensation as already discussed. So it is the benefits which are paid by the employer to compensate for the loss of employment. So you are directly making them leave the employment. So just to compensate that loss, it is retrenchment compensation. Least is again 5 lakh and the amount received and the middle amount is 15 by 26. Already told you into average salary of last three months into completed year of service. So because fourth point will not be there because they are retrenching their employees and it is not a voluntary retirement scheme. In this case, uh, salary will include basic plus allowances plus perquisite, any leave travel concession and commission. So all to be included in the salary. Salary definition keeps on changing depending upon the area we discuss. Next is relief under section 89. Okay, uh, what happens, why we need to calculate this relief part is, for example, uh, you are working in 2021-22 financial year, right? And there is an employee, uh, you are you already worked from past three years and you were on a salary of 9,60,000 per annum, that is 80,000 per month. And after a period of time, 
the employer feels that this employee is loyal hard working and now it's a time that the salary should be increased with a retrospective effect from past 3 years the salary which was paid on 960000 it should be paid at 12 lakh per annum that is 1 lakh per month what happens is this case is in the current financial year when you got a salary of 12 lakh you also get the past arrears and due to which your tax gets increased had that amount been received earlier the tax would have not be at such a higher amount so this is relief under section 89 so whenever tax is calculated on a person's total income but if this total income includes any past arrears or dues then a higher tax on such income is to be paid to save from such burden the law provides a relief how this relief works is there are seven steps in it first you calculate the tax which is to be paid on the total income including the additional arrears for example in this year you are receiving 12 lakh plus per annum 1 lakh 20, uh, 2 lakh 40000 arrears for 3 years that is let's suppose for 2 years it becomes 4 lakh 80 this year you are getting 12 lakh plus 4 lakh 18 so you have to calculate tax on 16 lakh 80000 step 2 says you have to calculate tax on total income including such arrears so you have to calculate on your normal income of 12 lakh whenever you deduct those two amounts you get your step 3 so this is the first part second part says you have to calculate the tax in the year in which arrears relate excluding arrears including arrears so both the things then you deduct these two you get step 6 when you deduct step 3 to step 6 you get the tax relief so this is ideally in which the year it was ideally to be uh, included the tax effect that really that much amount relief is given to you the next important topic is we have all done the additions part in the gross salary now we have some deductions under section 16 there are three important deductions the first is a standard deduction the standard deduction till financial year 17 18 was not there from financial year 18 19 it was 40000 per month and from financial year 19 20 this is increased to 50000 until now it is 50000 standard deduction which is given for the employees whose income is taxable under the head salary it is only for income under the head salary no any other head will have such standard deduction of this 50000 amount right the next we have is entertainment allowance it is only available to government employees so if this allowance is given to non government employees it becomes fully taxable so there is no deduction in case of government employees the lower of the falling it is 20% of basic salary or 5000 or the allowance which is actually received so you just have to calculate the minimum and it becomes your exemption it is a very rare case only in case of government employees the third is professional tax so professional tax is a tax which is on the employment levied by the state so in many states of india professional tax is levied and in some states it's not there but whatever amount is paid as professional tax is available as deduction to the employee under 163 now uh, in detail on this topic i'll have a discussion when i'll be having videos on payroll processing but as of now you can understand this amount is available for deduction that's all for today's topic and uh, if you want to get the pdf notes topic so it is available on my website it is available in income tax basics it will be uploaded in a day or two you can follow our boxcov academy on facebook twitter and linkedin and please subscribe to my channel here you people come you people watch you people give me a lot of love but you don't subscribe so it's my heartiest request please subscribe to my channel and uh, there was a query and uh, i have received from many uh, subscribers saying that they don't want to message or call me the other option is you can mail me your query right so it's info@voxcop.com you can just mail me any inquiry or query you have either for the classes or for any technical doubts you can just mail me your query and i'll sort it out at the earlier as possible that's all for today's video have a good day bye bye